How do you reverse a thoracic kyphosis? When we look at spinal curvatures, we know the spine's natural shape and healthy curves make it more flexible, better to absorb and distribute mechanical stress, make it stronger, kind of like a coiled sprain. And there are many spinal conditions that involve loss or affecting the spine's normal healthy curvatures. Each, main, each section of the spine, each main section has a character, characteristic or curve type associated with it. When we look at the three main sections, we understand that the cervical spine is in the neck, the thoracic spine is in the middle of the upper back, and then the lumbar spine is in the low back. Okay? And what happens when we look at thoracic kyphosis, we need to understand what's affecting. The thoracic spine, like I said, is the middle of the upper back, and this refers to the largest section of the thoracic of the spine. It actually consists of most of the vertebrae. It's 12 out of the 24 bones. Kyphosis means that the spine is actually bending in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. There are two main curvatures of the spine. We know there's a kyphosis and something called a lordosis. A, ky a kyphosis is where the spine bends towards the back of the body, and the lordosis means that the spine bends towards the front of this body. Lordotic curvatures are typically found in the cervical spine and in the lumbar spine, and a kyphosis is normally found in the, the thoracic spine. There is a normal range for something called a thoracic kyphosis, and that range is between 20 and 40 degrees. When a thoracic kyphosis becomes excessive or becomes bigger than what it needs to be, it is something termed a hyperkyphosis. But most patients say just thoracic kyphosis. Even though a thoracic kyphosis is somewhat normal, you should have a kyphosis in the, in the mid-back area, but when it becomes larger than what it's supposed to be, we call that a hyperkyphosis. Now, the opposite is also true. Patients could have a thoracic hypokyphosis, where the curve is less than 20 degrees and their mid-back actually becomes very, very, very flat. That's, we see that as well. But most patients, when we're talking about thoracic kyphosis, we mean that this has become excessive. And when the spine, be, when these curves become excessive, it affects the upper back and makes the patient seem like they're hunched, hunched through this mid-back kind of excessive forward bending of the thoracic spine. Now, what are some common symptoms associated with this excessive thoracic kyphosis? Well, the first thing you have to understand is that every case is very specific and it's normally based upon the patient's age, severity, and the condition associated with the kyphosis. But one of the most common thing we tend to see in adults is back pain. It can be back pain in the mid-back where the kyphosis occurs, but it can also be back pain below that because anything above can normally affect things below. It can be stiffness in the back or really stiffness in the shoulder shoulders, a, a lack of normal range of motion in the shoulders, their head tends to be relative, sitting relatively forward relative to their body, a noticeably rounded back appearance. They can have fatigue, meaning they can have tired standing or sitting for a long period of time or walking. There could be a change to balance. Um, it could have difficulty laying on hard surfaces on, on their back because the spine doesn't flex or extend as properly. In severe cases, there could be lung impairment because as this kyphosis increases, it decreases flexibility of the thoracic spine in the rib cage. And when patients breathe, they can't open up their rib cage properly. And it can also lead to bowel and bladder issues in severe cases because as this kyphosis increases, the entire length of the torso also decreases, and since everything is length, everything becomes shorter or compressed, it can lead to issues occurring in this area. Now, when we look at thoracic kyphosis, people ask, is there a way of correcting it? Well, complete reverse th uh, thoracic kyphosis isn't always possible, but the sooner we find it, the more likely curves can be actually improved, and improvement can be worked towards many different, in many different ways. But the treatment plans definitely need to be crafted around the patient's age, the symptoms they're experiencing, and the severity. And the biggest thing associated with thoracic kyphosis is what's something I call flexibility. If the spine isn't flexible in this area, it becomes very, very difficult to deal with the kyphosis. And the, normally, the older the patient becomes, the more severe the scoliosis, the, the more severe the kyphosis is, the less flexible the, that area is, so the less they respond to treatment. The sooner the kyphosis is treated and the younger the patient is, normally the more flexible, normally the better response we have. So in addition to all the things that I mentioned, we know there's some different types of scoliosis. First thing, there's something called postural scoliosis. And postural scoliosis is exactly what you would imagine. It's when you see patients, they, they stand in a rounded position for too long and they start developing 
a postural misalignment. Once it's postural and it's only postural, these types of things can change very, very quickly because it's just postural, meaning they can totally move out of the kyphosis. But postural uh, kyphosis is that are not corrected or dealt with quickly, they can develop into a structural kyphosis. And when they develop into a structural kyphosis, now as they move, the kyphosis doesn't totally resolve and it stays stuck. And this is what we call stiffness in this structural deviation or this structural kyphosis. There are some other types of kyphosis. There is something called congenital kyphosis. And congenital kyphosis is when there's an abnormal vertebra in the spine that's wedged or too triangled, and that will cause this kyphosis to occur. And there's something also called Schumann's kyphosis, which is similar to congenital kyphosis. Is this is where there's multiple vertebra that have an abnormal shape to them that lead to a kyphosis developing. Congenital kyphosis and Schumann kyphosis are much more difficult to deal with than a postural uh, kyphosis that becomes structural. Okay, now in all of these cases, dealing with the kyphosis on a structural level normally deals with the best, uh, best approaches. And this normally involves a, a, a very uh, combined approach using chiropractic care, using specific uh, kyphosis exercises, physical therapy, postural modeling, even kyphosis bracing can be used to help impact the structural kyphosis to help make the spine better. Now, if it's just a non-structural kyphosis, meaning it's just postural, lots of other things can possibly help. But when we normally look at structural types of kyphosis, this is the way you have to deal with it to restore normal alignment and normal structure by normally inducing a more aligned or more reduced kyphosis, decreasing that kyphosis and that thoracic spine. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.